Are you looking to improve your print quality? Maybe squeak out a little more power from your laser, but you don't really want to damage it or cause permanent changes? Stick around. I might have just what you're looking for. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to design and build my own Air Assist module. As most makers do, the first thing I did was go online and look for inspiration. I immediately found a couple of videos that had some really interesting approaches to Air Assist, however they also had a couple of flaws that I didn't like. The first one uses a modified nozzle which I think is great in that it protects the laser as well as it'll help to focus the air coming from the Air Assist. I did not, however, like the idea of drilling a hole through my laser case. The second one I found approached the problem from a completely different direction. He actually used a brass tube running through the screw holes to route the air down to the laser point. I really like this idea since it's relatively non-invasive. However, I did not really care for having a big metal tube just hanging out in front of the laser, much less the grid. With that, I decided to combine the best parts of both and see what I could come up with. First step, dismantle the laser, take a bunch of measurements. Once I'd gotten measurements from all the various parts, next I needed to figure out what size tube to use. Since I did most of this research on the air assist while waiting for the laser to show up, I didn't know what size tube would fit, so I ordered a multi-pack from Amazon so I'd have various options to try from. The largest diameter tube I was able to get to fit ended up being a 2mm diameter. Once I had all the measurements and a little idea in my head, I jumped into Blender and started creating. I went back and forth designing and printing several different versions before I found one that worked really well. I elected to print the parts at a white PETG. I chose PETG for its higher temperature capabilities, and I chose white so that I could see if it started to mold, bend, or burn. As with any good project, the first step is always to take it apart. Unfortunately, the Allen wrenches that come with the printer don't necessarily fit all of the screws. I had to scavenge through my other tools to be able to find one that would be able to take the glass off. While not strictly necessary, it does make it easier to get into the laser cavity. After we've got the glass out of the way, the next step is to remove the laser lens cover. It has two screws located on the back side.
hope you can forgive the dramatics, but right here is one of the biggest gotchas of the whole thing. And quite frankly, this caused me a lot of headaches when trying to design this. There are four separate spacers on top, and hidden underneath there are four more spacers that go between the fan and the circuit board, and the ones on top go between the circuit board and the cover. These spacers are not attached to anything and are only being held in place by the screws themselves. When you take the screws out, they have a tendency to fall all over the place. But don't worry, I have a trick to help you out with this. Before removing any of the screws from the top cover, the first thing we need to do is cut down our brass tube that's going to go inside. I cut mine down to between 152 and 153 millimeters. Unfortunately, I can't be much more precise than that because I had to bend the tube in order to get it in to get the correct measurements for it. And once the tube is bent, precision becomes a lot more challenging. As far as bending the tube goes, I would not recommend doing it the way I did. I would feed the tube all the way in, make a mark on it, take it out, and then bend it in a much more gentle manner. I stuck the tube in and used the nozzle itself to bend it, which worked okay, but I did have a minor amount of crimping on the top of the tube, which didn't seem to affect it too much, but if you're not careful, you could actually crimp the whole thing and not get any air through it. Once you have the tube cut down to the correct length and bent so that it is relatively perpendicular to the nozzle itself, go ahead and feed it into the nozzle in preparation for installation. Before going any further in the installation, I would recommend at this point making sure the brass tube will fit both in the nozzle and in the top cover. Feed it in two or three times to make sure you can get it in nice and easily since every printer has different tolerances. If it's a challenge to get it into it, you're going to have a hard time with following with the rest of the install. That being said, it also should not be too loose because remember, we're trying to make a nice, relatively airtight seal. At this point, we're ready to start feeding in the nozzle partially. Remember, the screws are still installed on the other side, so we're going to slide it in until you feel resistance where it pushes up against the screw and then stop. Flip it over and very carefully keep the thing straight up and down as you remove the screw right above where the tube is coming through. Remember, the screw is the only thing holding those spacers in place, so we essentially want to insert the tube as we pull out the screw. So, loosen it up until it's no longer grabbing the threads, and then feed the brass tube through and use it to push the screw out. But again, be gentle. Brass is very soft, and if you're not careful, you'll bend over the tip. Once you got the brass tube fully inserted, you can relax a little bit. It will keep the spacers in place as we flip it over and finish installing the nozzle on the bottom. The design of the nozzle is such that it will block a very minimal amount of the cooling fan that's coming down, but it will help to focus all of the air from the air assist and blow it right onto where the laser is burning. Now it is also designed to be nice and snug so that it won't leak or fall out or anything like that. So you may need to use some needle nose or something like that to help feed it in on the back side. That being said, remember, it's only plastic, so don't be jamming or stabbing or anything of that nature. Once you've got it fully inserted, you can start screwing in one of the two screws that we removed. Again, depending on your printer tolerances, you may need to twist or adjust the nozzle slightly to get the screw hole to line up. Again, be careful. Remember, the brass tube is feeding through there and into the metal, so don't twist too hard or you'll crimp or bend it, as well as possibly break the plastic nozzle. Screw the screw most of the way in, but don't crank it down just yet. Once it's in nice and tight, again, make sure the nozzle is flush and flat and smooth before actually tightening down the screw to max. I would also recommend holding it down with your thumb while you're tightening up that screw. The nozzle is designed to fit just slightly short of being flush with the outer casing. This will ensure maximum amount of air is going right where it's needed. Now that we've got the nozzle installed, it's time to do the top cover. Again, this is where a little bit of finesse is going to be required. We need to remove the three screws left on top and remove the top plate without allowing those little spacers to fall down. Now, it's not too terribly bad. You can leave the laser engraver sitting on the table nice and flat. And as long as you pull the screws straight out and lift the cover straight up and align the new cover down straight down, 
and refeed the screws back in straight down, they shouldn't go anywhere. But if the thing falls over or anything of that nature while you're doing this, it's going to be a bad day because you're going to have to take it completely apart and reinstall everything upside down to get it to go in again. Those observe it folks out there may have noticed the white wrapped around the middle and the top. That is thread seal tape for doing plumbing like faucets and, and uh, shower heads and stuff. I put it on there in the hopes that it would help with the seal, though I don't know if it really did anything. Once you've got the three screws fed into the holes, you should be good to go. They will hold all the spacers in place while you tighten everything down. And with that, the only thing left to do is hook up the hose, hook up the compressor, and test her out. To test how well the air sister did, I ran the exact same file that I ran after assembling the machine the first time. And I will tell you, I was absolutely blown away by the results, as you will see momentarily. As you can see by these two test burns with the air assist on the left and the no air assist on the right, much cleaner prints, much better, also much stronger. You can see that it burned through many more holes than it did without the air. Now you can ignore the labels on there. These are both the same wood from the same stuff. I just, the tags got changed when I uploaded the file again. Otherwise, everything is exactly the same, all the same settings.
With the serious burns out of the way and testing done, I figured let's have some fun. So I ordered, uploaded my Sweetycraft logo onto Lightburn, fiddled with it a little bit, and decided to see what I could do. That's pretty awesome. I do want to darken the sweaty craft, so I'm going to run that part one more time. Unfortunately, when I put the camera back down, I think I bumped the wood because after the second burn, there was a little bit of a shadowing effect on the sweaty craft portion of the logo. But all in all, still think it turned out pretty good, and I really liked it. That is awesome. Well, my friends, that is going to be it for this video. On screen now, you can see all the different parts that went with the Air Assist. I will have links to all of those where I bought them on Amazon in the description, as well as links to the downloads for the two pieces for the Air Assist that you can 3D print yourself. I'll upload those to Thingiverse and add it to the description. As always, guys, thanks for watching and hope to see you again.